So I'm going to make a new section for homeworks. Uh oh. Ah, alright, homeworks or exercises. Alright, guess it's going to be called new section then. So that step builder notation kernel of L is all X in, I think it probably said domain of L, such that L of X equals zero. And this is the zero vector. So I'll go around a couple times. So it's a zero vector. So now I'm going to go back and see what that L function actually is. So this L function is multiply on the left by this uh -oh. part a is really easy all you do is apply the l function to that vector so i'm going to skip part a that's just multiply matrices so that's straightforward just multiply on the left by the l matrix and you'll get that two by two answer right there so that's easy not worried about that uh, let's look at the kernel however they give us a big hint the kernel is all vectors that make uh, zero when you apply the L function. They're telling us that the kernel has two dimensions because there's two vectors right here. And the range, they're also telling us is two dimensions right here. So what I'm gonna do is find the kernel first and we're gonna use that uh, set notation that I have written in the notes. And so they just called V the basically the domain of your linear function. I wrote it as domain of L, but that's just your uh, where your inputs live. All right, so it's two, negative three, negative five, zero. Two, negative three, negative five, zero. That's our L right there. So we want to find X. Get some lines. So our domain is two by two matrices. So one way to write a two by two matrix, just put in generic coefficients. So it'll just be some matrix A, B, C, D like that. And now we're going to L, apply the L function to this matrix and Without flipping back to that page, that's multiplying the left by L. And then I'm going to put the X matrix here, A, B, C, D. And this should, the equation, where is this? Need a little more room here. I'm solving for x in the L of x equals zero equation because I'm trying to find kernel at the top of the board. So it's really similar to null space, exactly the setup for null space. What should be on the right side? What do we mean by zero in this example? Zero vector. So what zero vector? What's the dimensions on this? Two by two by two. How do you know it's two by two? So we got two by two times two by two match. So outer dimensions have to match. So it's a little bit weird because we're going to get a matrix that's also considered as a vector. So it's a little bit strange. Don't worry, we'll get through it. All we got to do is carefully multiply. We're going to go across and down the way we always multiply. So go across the first, down the second matrix. So our product matrix is going to be two A minus three C. That's our upper left entry. Upper right is going to be two, oops, negative five A plus zero. And then our, whoa, that's not right. Two A minus, no, two B minus three D. I think I'm very ready for the weekend. Is that? I do that multiplication right. 2b minus 3d. That looks good. All right. Second row, I got negative 5a plus 0c. And then negative 
B uh, plus zero D. So I think I got an extra easy example here. Yours will probably be more difficult. That zero makes this, uh, my, my problem a little bit easier than yours may be. So one matrix equals another matrix. What is a different way to consider this equation? Four different equations. And how many unknowns do we have? Four. So we got four equations, four unknowns. Let's write out the four equations now. We're going to put it back into a matrix, but this is not the right uh, setup to solve for A, B, C, and D. It's fine to write them out like this. This is how we got them, but we need to write in an augmented matrix so we can row reduce. So I'm going to intentionally space out so I don't have any B's in the first uh, equation, so I'm leaving space for B. So I have my basically my A column, B column, C column, D column equals constant. So minus 3C equals 0. Our next 2B minus 3D also equals 0. And now my bottom left is negative 5A equals 0. And then negative 5B is 0. So there's my linear system. If you want to wrap your linear system in something, we use the curly brackets to just say this is grouped together like that. All right, so let's turn it into a matrix. So we got 2, 0, negative 3, 0, 0. 0, 2, 0, negative 3, 0. Negative 5, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, negative 5, 0, 0, 0. All right, so my linear system's extra easy. Yours will have at least, let's see, you should have at least eight zeros because there'll be, uh, there should be at least two zeros in each row, basically, if you just look at the way the multiplication happens. So it'll be what's called a sparse matrix, which is lots of zeros. And we're going to row reduce. So we got negative one fifth, negative one fifth. And then we'll get those twos out. So we got minus two row three and minus two row four. So we got first row is now zero, zero, negative three, zero, 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 negative three, zero, 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 zero. This is not good. All right, so I can say that A, B, C, and D all have to equal zero right here. So any questions on that, those algebra steps we took right there. I was expecting two free variables. I'm a little bit worried. So right now, what we just determined is the kernel has exactly one vector in it. It's the vector that is 0, 0, 0, 0. So we just solved the kernel has exactly one vector. It's that one right there, the 0 vector. When I was looking at the problem, so if we look here, they were asking a basis for the kernel. Well, they gave us 2. So I'm a little bit worried about this. So the, the basis of this kernel, there'd be no elements in the basis. So you put any non-zero element in there, you have dimension one. Oh, geez. What did I do wrong? It was an English mistake. You can see what I did wrong.
I chose this random matrix in part A as my L. I did not choose the proper, at the top of the screen, the very first line of the screen right now is the actual definition of what L is. All I did was I went and grabbed, oh look, there's a two by two matrix, good enough. So yes, the kernel of the wrong matrix is zero, but it has nothing to do with the kernel of the right matrix. All right, so now you saw the steps to do it. I want you to go beginning to end. So use that, the proper matrix up there. Uh, I'll flip back to the notes. So we got negative nine, three, negative three, one. I think you only need this on the board because after that, it's pretty obvious what to do. It's just your regular linear system and solve it. So I'll give you a one minute head start. It's a good time if you've got questions to ask those. Should be expecting two free variables with this matrix.
And you can check your work. I got the linear system written down. For um, matrices like these, where it'll be like uh, half zeros, could you write them to save space as two two by two matrices using the A and C is equal zero as a two by two matrix and the B's and D's as two by two? In in this situation, the so a good way to think about this is the first, or the I should say the first and third equation are in A and C only. So really, if we just think of regular algebra, if I was solving these, I wouldn't need to know anything about B and D. So in this particular case, you could kind of partition off your AC columns and make one, and then your B, D columns and make a second augmented matrix, but only because the variables are, are sort of partitioned in this way. Yeah. So yes, if you if you can kind of partition variables like this, so certain variables show up in exactly these equations, and then the other variables show up in other equations, you could partition it like that, yeah. And if you're feeling lazy, you can skip space and not write zeros, as long as, it probably works better on graph paper, so you can like literally see that there's an empty space without actually writing like those extra zeros in. So that works, right? It didn't matter which way. Yeah, I was thinking of going, maybe I should, I was thinking about using row three to take out row one, yeah. not the other, but it doesn't matter, yeah. So that should work, yeah. So you got three, zero, negative one, zero, zero, three, zero, negative one. Yeah, so that's not the normal way I would have done it, but you get the same thing. All right, so how many free variables? Two. Not a coincidence that we're expecting two vectors in our kernel. So we got two independent variables here. So we got A, B, C, D. So let's write our, I think that's what I used. Yeah, A, B, C, and D. So we got 3A minus C equals 0. 3B minus D equals 0. And then C is free. So I'll do C is T and D is S. So let's solve for A and B in the usual way. So 3A equals C and then A equals 1 third C, which is 1 third T. Our B is 1 third D, which is 1 third S. So before we would have written our vector normally like this, A, B, C, D equals like that. We would have written them going downwards, but that's not the configuration we have here. We have, just like it was written at the above A, B, C, D in our two by two, and that's going to be, let's see, A is one third T, B is one third S, and then I just have, let's see, the order is important. C is T and D is S. All right, so, and this is for all uh, S and T in R. This is for any real S and T. All 
All right, so it's going to be two dimensional because there's two free variables. I'm going to do what I have done for all of our. So we did this when we computed our eigenspaces, and there were two two vectors, or there were two dimensional eigenspaces. So I'm going to separate the s's and the t's out. And it's a little bit strange because we have a two by two. So I'll do it in two steps. I'll write all the t's here. So what I wrote doesn't make any sense. So how do I make it make sense? I can't just pull them apart like this. So I'm just going to place zeros in the column two in the first matrix and then zeros in column one in the second matrix. So I add those together and that's how I separate my S's and my T's like that. And then the last thing, like I always did before, I'm going to factor the T and factor the S out. So it's going to be a super easy step for that. So we got T, one third, zero, one, zero, plus S, zero, one third, zero, one. And of course I hate fractions, so they cannot survive in my matrix. So I'm going to go with one, zero, three, zero for the first. And then get that third out of the S matrix, zero, one, zero, three. Like that. And what would, what would those accept it when you take out the one third like that? It should take any non zero multiple of these. So I, I could have gone with the one third, zero, one, zero, but I have a healthy disdain for fractions. So, especially, I mean, you get granted the fraction is still here, but. That's just, those are just new scalars right there. So what you could do is you could call it like T1, where T1 is uh, one third T, something like that, and plus S1, like that. And then, hey, look, no fractions, but however you want to deal with it. What I'm really after are these matrices. Those are our basis elements. So that's the answer to what is a basis for the kernel. Are these vectors independent? How do we determine if two, so we could write the linear combination, but if there's two vectors, there's a special way to determine independence. What do you do when there's two vectors? So if they're multiples. So it's pretty clear, they're definitely not multiples because the non-zeros are in the opposite columns. So there's no multiple that's gonna take one to the other. Uh, so they're independent and uh, that's our basis. So I'll just write it in that math notation. So I'm going to write kernel of L was our matrix equals span of our basis. So that is the answer for part B or C, whatever that was. We'll look back. All right, I don't have internet, so I can't plug these in and get them wrong. That means I'm right. So we'll go for part C now. So I'm going to go for the range. And we're going to use the hint this time. The image of a spanning set is a spanning set for the image. So there's another word I don't know. And now I don't have internet, so I can't look it up. All right, so I'll just write down the definition. <laughs> so. If I had internet, I would just go search right here on Wikipedia and just write down image. Um, and you may want to do image linear algebra, so it's a little more relevant to what you're actually doing as opposed to just a general image of a function. So the image of a set S with function F is, all you do is take S and F it. So this is really similar to just figuring out what the output is. The only weird thing is you're going to put multiple things as the input. So that's the only difference between this and just the regular uh, taking a single input and Fing it. 
So we're just looking at what is the image of everything in S. So they gave us oops, another, the image, so now we know image, the image of a spanning set. So the image of a spanning set, we're gonna take the spanning set, which we don't have yet, but we'll create a spanning set, and we will apply the L function, and then we'll see what happens to each element in that spanning set. Uh, and it says the image of a spanning set is a spanning set for the image. So what we get when we apply the L function, we'll get a spanning set. So what's a spanning set? No, it would be a set that spans, or a, yeah, a set whose span is your entire uh, whatever thing you're thinking about. So the image of a spanning set, so the image, the inputs come from V. So I need to write down what is the spanning set of our domain, and then we're going to apply the L function and see what the image or what those spanning set vectors turn into when we apply the L function. All right, our vector space V is two by two, so it's actually a four-dimensional vector space. So we're going to get to pick a basis for it. A basis is a spanning set that's independent. So it's a spanning set that has no extra vectors inside of it. So I'm going to need four vectors for my spanning set. So we need to get a spanning set for V, which is two by two matrices. And any element X in V X is going to look like A, B, C, D. And so we need our four basis vectors, because our dimension is four, such that the linear combination can give me any two by two matrix I want. Well, there's four entries in a two by two matrix. So let's go with uh, the easy uh, canonical basis or easy basis. So the first basis element, just like we did before, we're basically looking in R4, except our vectors are lined up a little weird. So E1 will be 1, 0, 0, 0. E2 will be 0, 1, 0, 0. E3, 0, 0, 1, 0. And E4, 0, 0, 0, 1. So I'm just progressively moving the 1 through each coordinate. That's exactly what we did when we were working in R4 if we had a vertical vector. There would have just been four basis vectors. Each one has a one in different spots. All right, so here's our basis. Now all we're going to do is apply L to each of these individually. So make sure we use the right L this time. It's negative 9, 3, negative 3, 1. by the one zero 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 matrix. So it should be a fast product because it's mostly zeros. So we get negative nine plus zero. The right column is all going to be zeros because our right column and our product is all zeros. So right column zeros. And then we got negative three in the bottom left. Le2. So we get zeros in the left column. I'm going to go kind of quickly here. I'll try to be correct. Three. Oop, that should be negative nine. I'm trying to go too fast. Negative nine, negative three. LE3,
All right, so that hint said the span of, the image of the span is the span of the image. So we just took the basis elements and applied our function. Now we're gonna look at the span of their images. So what I put a box around is the image of the span, and now I'm gonna look at the, or it's the, it's the image of the basis, so now we're gonna look at the span of all of these. Now normally, uh, well, so I can just write down the range is the span of these vectors. Range of L is the span of all these vectors right here. So I'll just write LE1, LE2, LE3, and LE4. It's faster than writing all the entries in here. So all I need to do now is check, well, maybe some of these are dependent. So I want to throw out, they wanted a basis for this range. So what I need to do is, uh, span's always gonna be a vector space, but this may not be a basis. So we need to decide which ones are dependent. So I think we're almost out of time. So I will set up the linear dependence and then you will decide which ones to throw out. And they already told us in the problem, expect two. So two of them should be dependent. Uh, so we're gonna remove dependent vectors. So we'll set up our linear equation, alpha one LE one plus alpha two LE two plus alpha three LE three plus alpha four LE four equals zero vector. So it's alpha one, now I need to zoom way out. Alpha one times nine, zero, negative three, zero, plus alpha two, zero, negative nine, zero, negative three, plus alpha three, three, zero, one, zero, plus alpha four, zero, three, zero, one, equals zero, 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 zero. So what we are looking at is really four linear equations. And again, we just have to reconfigure the way it's written. So I'll just do the, so we got nine alpha one. I'm gonna add everything on the left together. Plus zero plus three alpha three plus zero. So that's my upper left entry. So I just went and grabbed the, all those entries I circled, but I also multiplied the scalars inside the matrices at the same time. Oh, sure did. Negative nine. Okay, so now we'll get the upper right corner. So it's no alpha ones minus nine alpha twos, no alpha threes plus three alpha four. Now we're moving to the bottom left, negative three alpha one plus zero alpha two plus alpha three. And then bottom right, zero minus three alpha two plus alpha four equals zero, 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 zero. All right, so you got four uh, equations, four unknowns. You should get expect two free and two fixed. So you do, it's gonna be very similar to the last problem we did, where you're gonna get two free variables and then, actually it won't be that similar, you will, you will decide which two matrices to eliminate is what you're gonna be doing. So you already have a spanning set, so we're gonna be throwing some out. Let's use some intuition instead. Can you see two matrices here that are dependent without doing linear algebra at all? How can I use the third matrix to get the first? Multiply by negative three. So if I have the third matrix, I don't need the first. What else can I eliminate? So the second and fourth have the exact same relationship. If I have the fourth, I don't need the second. So I can just go with those two. This was a very easy system to determine uh, which ones were dependent. 
Um, they won't all be this easy. But I showed you the general way to do it, which is down here, you can set it up more generally. So if it's not obvious, that you can just kind of cancel, oh, that makes that matrix, this one makes the other one. You can do it this way.